Hi, this is Tim Kelly. We're going to begin today what we hope is going to be a regular feature here on Indigo Journal, uh, meeting each week with a member of the South Carolina General Assembly to discuss the issues that are going on. Today we begin with Senator Phil of Venice. Well, my priority, one, if, if you'd ask me that to begin with, is employment, jobs, and training and education for those jobs. Um, right now we're, we're faced with an economic crisis the likes of which uh, none of us have ever seen. That, uh, I'm afraid uh, our governor doesn't realize now, um, and pardon me for being critical, but it, it's what needs to be said, is that the job of governor and the job of the legislature is the most practical job in the world. It's not about theory. It's about opening schools, staffing prisons, paving roads. And we're falling short on that now as we try to save our way into some kind of prosperity uh, with the governor's proposed additional tax cuts and furloughing of state employees. Now is the time the state needs to step up and serve its constituency and provide the services for the unemployed, for the untrained, for people whose uh, health issues have been exacerbated by the terrible dislocation of being unemployed or whatever. So, uh, you know, this this is a time when we need to be fund funding those counter cyclical agencies, the ones that have more to do because we got problems. Senator Corson and I put together a bill to restructure DHEC uh, to, to make it more responsive and to make it uh, more accessible to the public. Uh, implicit in our bill is that those mandates we've put on DHEC over the years haven't been met by the existing structure. We hope that they would be met by the new one. Case in point, uh, we had said to DHEC many years ago that you should not permit municipal waste dumps unless there was a demonstrated need for that dump. Now we've got proposals for two mega dumps in rural counties that couldn't possibly need them or use them, uh, Williamsburg and Marlboro, and uh, basically DHEC is saying there's no reason they can't give those permits, or in fact DHEC has said that they feel that they may be threatened if they do get don't give those permits by lawsuits and the like. We think a governor can stand up to that. and. Uh, the Levinas bill would also address how DHEC holds hearings, such as the appeal of an air quality permit granted to Santee Cooper for its proposed coal plant. Right now, the DHEC board hears appeals, but they also hear recognition of outstanding employees of the month. They also hear about requisitions for mops if they exceed a certain level, and that's, uh, that's kind of silly. It's too much for one board to be overseen. So we're going to have two specialized boards, one that hears um, appeals of uh, health-related cases and the other environmental-related cases, and, and I think that that will be good. I'm, I'm anxious to uh, get moving. Uh, I'm not ever for change for change's sake, but I think this is constructive change. Senator Levinas opposes Santee Cooper's plans for the PD, along with environmental groups, the Department of Natural Resources, and now Governor Mark Sanford. I'm disappointed with Santee Cooper uh, because uh, they know, and I know, and I hope everyone else knows, that it only costs one penny per kilowatt hour to conserve electricity, but it costs 10 cents or more per kilowatt hour to build new electric capacity. And although Sandy Cooper's working on conservation, that needs to be their focus. That and alternative energy. People say, well, we can't get enough alternative energy, alternative energy to solve our problems. Well, no, we can't. But we can save energy, and we can inform the public and we can build alternative energy sources uh, that will get us by. And when you look at the life cycle cost of a coal power plant, uh, especially the mercury that it puts into the environment, you just have to say, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, we can save money by having fewer troopers on the road, for example. But we can also equate that to number of deaths on the highway. That's a, that's a trade-off that I don't want to make. I'm willing to vote for a cigarette tax. Uh, I'm willing to vote for a gas tax. Not because I like taxes. I don't like taxes. Uh, but because we've got demonstrated needs and demonstrated relief from some of those needs if we step up to the plate and uh, meet our obligations. And our obligations are not 
to run government for nothing they are to run government for people. We will get a commission to put together a, a, a comprehensive tax reform bill. And by the way, uh, that's a cliche, comprehensive this and that and the other. But in terms of tax reform, it's the only way. And here's the reason. The tax structure we've got now, which many say is uh, not just flawed, but just helter-skelter. For example, I mean, it's an off use example. There's a tax ex sales tax exemption for twine and wrapping paper used in grocery stores. Nobody uses twine and wrapping paper in grocery stores anymore. But when it was passed, it mattered. Uh, in fact, uh, comprehensive reform is the only way we can do it. Reform where it's basically a take it or leave it kind of thing. In fact, if we did away with all of the current tax exemptions, we could lower the sales tax by 2%. Maybe that would be more fair. Whatever is fair, whatever uh, would give us a better basis to move forward is what I want, but it'll never happen peacefully. Mm -hmm. Because each of us, myself included, probably have put one of those tax exemptions in there over the years because at the time, it made sense. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, with, I understand, well over a billion dollars worth of these tax exemptions, it's time to look at them again. And it's time to look at our, our uh, income tax structure. Uh, we're told as we pass reductions in corporate tax that this makes a better business climate. Well, you have to ask yourself, is South Carolina's business climate more positive now? Is our business, is our result among our industries better now than states that didn't pass those reductions? I think the answer you'll find is we're all sharing in the pain equally. Uh, taxes matter. But what matters more is what government can do to help uh, individual people, groups of people, industry and business in a more orderly fashion. So that comprehensive tax reform is just part of that.